What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Bald Man Reacts. Welcome back to March Madness and day number three. We're going to do Misha Bray, the 420 Theatrical Roses today. One of the long-time subscribers, Yao Mei94, wanted me to do the record. And not only did he want me to do the record, he found the good quality SoundCloud audio recordings. And he did an entire translation of the record, put it in a Google Documents format that, or, that's easy to get to. And the fact that you took all that time to do that for me is really, really, really outstanding. It, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful. I'm very appreciative of just how much effort you put in to getting all this set up for me and taking that off my shoulders so that it would make easier for me to do the record. I am, I'm honored and I'm humbled and just thank you, my friend, truly. It just shows how passionate so many of you, all of you here are on the channel about bands you love. And that's what I hoped for when I started this five months ago. I'm truly blown away. And I really appreciate it. So because you went through all that effort, I cannot help but do it. I mean, that's just amazing. And the only way to reward you for all that hard work, my friend, is to get into Band Mija Bray and the 420 Theatrical Roses. I think I've done one track from them. The one to get back to them. And this certainly gives me a great opportunity to do so. So let's go ahead and get into it. The band is Mija Bray. The album is The 420 Theatrical Roses. And here we go. Start out with the intro, the idea. He said there was a poem written for it, so I'm going to go ahead and read that for you. Hey, I'm sure you can hear them too. The blue-nosed parrot you saw back then, or the hippotamus with red eyes. When you wake on a Sunday morning, the rain had fallen, you could hear those colors and scents too. Open the blue-black curtain, and my ideas will take flight. Outstanding. Thank you for translating that poem for me. Truly appreciate it. The next track is going to be Theatrical Blue Black. Really love that bass hit. Really bright, clean. I like that riff a lot. Really heavy. Good strong drumming. You got that pop punk feel going on again. All right. These riffs are furious, man. I like this. The bass line is so groovy. Love how heavy that guitar tone is. That very punk like vibe I get with the comp with the more complex riffing. Oh, 
like that higher pitch stretch through the It's a fun track. That, all the different elements they cram into this are impressive. It's really interesting. And they do it in such an accessible track, and that's really impressive. Really killer solo. Like the way he came out of that, back into that killer bass group. I love how clear and present the bass is. And that punk like flair of the drummer's got. So many elements going on in this track, I don't even know what the comments on. <laughs> Here you go from that pop punk into thrash, and then it kind of backs out. Just ear candy. This is so good. I'm hearing elements of some of my favorite bands wrapped into this awesome. I don't even know what I call it. I guess it's visual key. But it's like they match so many styles. The next track is Defile. Got the furry industrial start and these furious riffs coming in <laughs> this is a straight up power metal Almost emo like lyrics. It's amazing how happy they make these incredibly dark lyrics feel. All those riffs. Fast, driving, very, again, very punk like riff. What a 
what a track. They throw so many different elements. They throw it at you. Definitely get a little bit of a, that Avenged Sevenfold like feel. Love how this rift just broke the way it did. Their guitar player opens his solo so tastefully that video does. But he still structures them really, really well. Very well played, very well executed. Now we get this industrial like passage. Well, all that riff. And it's certainly familiar, but it's a great riff. You've heard that very, you've heard variations of it in quite a few different tracks over the years. But it still doesn't take away from just how enjoyable it is. Love that shift. Those pitch harmonics there. Alright! That was Defile! The next track is Hungry Psychopath. What are we going to get with this one? You know, with certain bands, you know the style that they sound like. So, you kind of expect it. With these guys, it's like opening a different box with every track. And you're wondering what you're going to get when you open the box. Nice grooves, good soil. Huh! Didn't expect that to go that way. Get this strong punk like it was. Great hooks. Really, really catchy and really strong. Again, they take these really crazy, dark lyrical themes and they make them happy. That's a gift, man. And it's mixed in with these introspective little lines. There must have been some worldwide discrepancies between the ideal and reality. Of, the hue of melancholy. Wow. Such a great groove. I love the, the finger picking I can hear from the bass playing. Nice little string rhythm. I might just be pick attack. Either way, I like it. Nice little harmonics there. 
Wow. Nice little vibrato there. A couple of cool little licks in between these phrases. Really, really, really love how good their guitar player is. And I taste who he is. Yeah, man, thank you so much for the little notations you made when the lyrics differ with, with your translations. That, that's really awesome, but it really helps. Really great groove. Really, really, really enjoyed this so far. This is a blast. All right, that was Hungry Psychopath. The next track is Mr. Rain is playing dead. There's bends, there's harmonics. Nice, heavy, pummeling riff to start this out. I like it. Bass line sounds awesome. Like that piano. You know, I'm normally not a fan of this style of vocal, that more emo like vocal, but I really like his voice. Love the alternative percussion back there. You can see some bongas, congas going on, or it might just be some electronic percussion. That, that conversational vocal delivery, too. Those cool little piano accents there sound awesome. Really adds some atmosphere. It's a great groove. Love that riff. Those little bass hammer ons back there sound awesome too. How good their bass player is and all the little things he's doing makes me want to go pick him up again. Some really cool things going on here, man. This keyboard accent, this piano accent, really make these parts really awesome. That's such a great feeling. The, it's weird to say, but the crazy madness of how he's written some of these lyrics kind of reminds me a bit of how Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Stone Sour writes some of his lyrics.
And, of course, the inevitable code comparison. A lot of metaphor and a lot of different hidden meanings. like the turntable stuff going on over there too. So many different little nuances and it's not something I expected at all. All right. The next, this, that track was Mr. Rain is playing dead. The next track is Raven. And it's coming out swinging. Sweeps. Nasty drums. Really aggressive vocals. Like these polyrhythms with that really killer bass work. Colons and Hammer Offs, their bass player is doing is awesome. This dude is really, really talented. I like that kind of high-pitched clean and the aggressive going on back there. It's a really cool vocal contrast. And again, they, they're they using those synths to light the passages up. I really like that color. metaphor there of one day we will all be or we will all be one the wandering ravens we don't mind even if we get our wounds we cannot speak of we are alive so we will shout now really impressive stuff Ed. outstanding the humbling musicianship was phenomenal that was the raven the next track is carrion beetle Gonna guess this is a traditional Japanese instrument of some kind. Please let me know what it is. I know you guys will. Wow. That's a way to come out of that. I 
There's that high pitched, out of off key, shrill that most of the Japanese bands tend to like to use. That actually sounds really good here, though. Wow, drop back out, and I guess we're probably going to get hit hard again. That's a really cool lick, though. Such a heavy, nasty riff. This is straight up a lot of death metal territory, and it's awesome. So heavy. I actually really like that vocal placement there too. Wow. This track just messes with you. I mean, it beats you up and it brings you down and it completely destroys you again. It's almost like this is rap. So many different influences here. And back to the insanity. What, is the track over? Nope, they're gonna beat me up again. What a track. Holy crow. That was Carrie and Beetle. The next track is Contagion. Lyric winner play here, really. And it's also painful. It's a very beautiful and very, very sad song. I mean, the 
metaphors are there. You can tell what it's about. But... Beautiful thing is, there's so many different ways you can interpret these lyrics. It's very brilliantly written. Pull several different things out of it. Very powerful. Musically, it is outstanding. There's points where this is hard to take in. It's got so many great things, such a great groove, so many shifts, and it's so beautiful. It gets to be one of those again where I'm I have to comment on this and shoot a video. This chorus here is so pretty. I love those set blocks over top of it. That falsetto of his right here evoking so much emotion. Wow. I got chills. That was Contagion. The next track is Echo. This is some really powerful stuff. And open with these beautiful synths. And great piano. Big ballady like riff here. Light feel of the electronic percussion there. Really powerful. Very beautiful. Pretty valid. Very, one of the more straightforward tracks on the record so far. That bass line back there had those little accents. Outstanding. Piano accents over there. This beautiful, beautiful track. Look how the drums came in here. I love how he does use a lot of those conversational like lyrical passages. Really powerful statement about relationships, too.
Wow, what a great vocal. I love that vibrato and little break in his voice. <sighs> Beautiful and really, really dark. Oh, and they went with an acoustic solo. Wow, that's awesome. Outstanding, what a great shift in the electric. Oh, and the way he's emoting in his solo, like he's grabbing me. Really, that, that chorus rips so well. It's so painful. And it's so powerful. Wow. Great guitar harmony there. The lead line. It's a classic ballad in so many ways, with so many different elements added to it. Great solo. Wow. Nice vibrato in that lead line. Great piano. I love how it's following that vocal line. Great melody there. And I've still got chills. That was Echo. The next track is Hatred. Tangle Red, Hunger Red. Wow. What a record. What an incredible record. There's very industrial elements. Fuse that great guitar line there. Really strong bass yet again. Wow. I like that flanger effect on the riff there. This is so good. I'm in love with this from the very opening of this track. I like those little vocal things going on in the background. Now it's shifted all this stuff. On track. Wow. 
I just love how this chorus sounds. It's just got such a great feel to it. The riff, the guitar line, the vocals. Get a little bit of that sorrow and that melancholy, but it still makes me feel good. Get a little bit of longing in my soul. Oh, this is so good. Beautiful. Painful. to listen to in so many ways to poppy hugs but lyrically it's so reflective and introspective and it's a beautiful track I like that aggressive vocal there makes you feel the pain that he's trying to get across trying to convey Standing. Wow, what a track. That was Hatred Tangle Red, Hunger Red. This track is momentary ideal. This comes in pretty quick. Wow. I like how it harkens back to that poem in the first trip, that the instrumental track, or for the instrumental track. Like with that, love that drum pattern. Love that bass line. And all the little things he's doing there. Those little cymbal accents back there that are punctuating the line are awesome. I love how they always go back to these very hot punk like phrases. And they add these great synth accents in again. This is really powerful stuff, man. Really good stuff.
such a cool baseline. They do a great job with their choruses in these tracks. Great lead into these solos. A little bluesy there. Great then. I love how adaptable this guy is this playing. For this, he's like, hey, I'm gonna do something a little more bluesy and make it, make it kind of feel like it's gonna rip your heart out of your chest. Really impressive. Great bass lines. Love those synth elements going on back there. It's so much for this. All right, that was a momentary ideal. As it takes us out, fade into the next one. And the next track is Bow Wow. This should be interesting. I think I have an idea how it's gonna go. We'll see. Oh yeah. Nice heavy, big, huge guitar now. Nice punk feel again. Like a triplet there in that riff. Like the underlying growl. That's a slick riff. That's not where I expected that to go at all, but that's kind of an awesome change. interesting ways you can take these lyrics too. Nice. Love how we went aggressive with the solo. Nice bit of sweeps. Nice vibrato there to hold that out. Love giving you that drama, building you up to get back into this riff. Good transition.
And then they shift back into that piano and they completely screw up that thing. The headbanging awesomeness. But it's a really good change. Shift into that little acoustic. Go back into that punk. Bass player is just going nuts. Great sits right over there. Add some more drama to it. Alright, that was Bow Wow. The next track is Suicidal Word Game. They shift into that powerful lyrical passage. They come back to these awesome punk lines again. There's that nice little vocal passage. Such a, I've said this so many times with this record. I sound like a broken record at this point. They do such a great job of making these really tough lyrics sound very happy and flowery. Quick, down and dirty and nasty one. That was Suicidal Word Game. The next track is Servant. Wow, that is a beastly riff. Definitely can feel that death metal feel. Get those samples and turn tables going in a little bit. <laughs> 
so awesome. They made this poppy. That's crazy. I'm not only a fan of that style, that feel, but it works really well here, especially with great musicianship for guitars, bass, and drums. And you know, for some reason, I don't find his aggressives to be as harsh or as uncomfortable as somebody like Coe's. I don't know why it is. I really like those aggressive tones he gets. Maybe it's in the mix and just how they are in the track writing itself. I'm not sure. That was servant. That was fast and nasty. Next track is Christate. Nice cruise here. Love that falsetto in his voice. Wow. They've got these sugary choruses, and they've had them throughout the entire record, and they're so good. Yet again, such a strong vocal. It truly feels like a battle within himself, and I love it.
Outstanding. Love the way that shifted. Wow. That was Crest 8. It's another incredible track. And the next one is The Bird Not Knowing How to Swim Dies by Drowning. Wow, I guess there's going to be something to this. Beautiful piano, really strong bass tone, there's clean, a clean guitar line in there, synth over it. Really nice, strong riffs. Really good stuff. and then back to the really gritty melodic stuff that's going on. So much drama. Wow. 
I like how his voice is breaking up a little bit here, too. He's just more that emotion, more that pain. Passion, painful vocal. Beautiful orchestration here. Wow. Add so much more emotion to an already really powerful, beautiful track. This whole album truly feels like a battle with inside himself. And the vocalist, lyricist, does such a great job with it. I can see why it's such an important record to so many people. Very incredibly emotional record. All right, that was the bird not knowing how to swim that dies by drowning. The next track is Copernicus. It's the last track on the record. The journey is almost over, my friends. Sad to say it. Very, very sad to say it. My next track is Copernicus. And this is also an instrument. It's the last track on the record. Thankfully, Yao Mei included the poem again, so I'm going to go ahead and read that real quick. Yes, we must make a choice for the future. A new start for our future, for our tomorrow. We'll start to move. Did you know that there are different sides of this world we are seeing. The rain won't last forever. It's something I've sung somewhere. However, I want to continue seeing, sending that endless rain, even if it's in its form isn't it? that of droplets have fallen from the sky. Finn, question. Wow. What an incredible record. Like the industrial overtone again. Keys. This is this has been an amazing record to listen to. It's been an amazing journey, and it's been a complete surprise to me. It really has. Got. <laughs> I've got so much to say about this record. Wow. It's almost saddening because it's such an incredible journey, even though it has been 17 tracks. You, I almost don't want it to end. And I love feeling like that with records. You go through so much, you go on this absolute emotional roller coaster of pain and sorrow and all these different emotions. And you know it's coming to a close. But you have that longing and that wistfulness of not wanting it to end because it's so incredible. And maybe I should just go ahead and restart it and do it all over again. Wow. What a record. Just incredible. That 
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, metal and J-Rock visual K fans of all ages, was Mija Bray, the 420 theatrical roses. What an absolutely phenomenal and incredible record. To be quite honest, what I'm going to say here is not going to do this record justice. What I've said throughout the reaction probably is not going to do this record justice. It's one that I really, really loved. It's accessible, but there's so much depth to it that I'm going to have to go back and listen to this one 10 to 20 times just to truly be able to take it all in. And truly be able to enjoy it as much as I know I will. And that says something when a record feels like that. A record is like that. Absolutely amazing. It's an absolutely incredible record. And certainly not what I expected at all. I didn't... I, think, I don't think I really came into it with any expectations other than that I've heard a track. So I truly had no idea what I was going to get other than the one track I heard. Which had a lot of that. Event Sevenfold, and punk, and the metal influences, and a lot of stuff going on. And I knew I was going to get that. What I did not know I was going to get was what this record truly is. And I can't put all of it into words. I really can't. It's absolutely incredible. It's produced and mixed so well. There's so much clarity in everything that's going on. The guitars sound great. Bass sounds amazing, and it's up front. It's in. It's really nice. They placed in the mix, and it's really. Enjoy it's. I love hearing just how good this player is, and how he understands where he's where he wants to be, and the accent little parts that other bass players might not do. The drummer is outstanding. He's got a great array of techniques. Yet he's still got plenty of groove and presence in the pocket, and he's where he needs to be. You can say that about the guitar player, too. The guitar player is outstanding. He's really, really good. And he plays what the song, what he feels like the song requires. And you can tell he's got some training, and he's certainly got the, some of the neoclassical stuff down. He's got some of the blues stuff down because he's playing what he needs to. And he's got these beautiful bluesy solos at points, these great neoclassical moments, clearly fast and shreds well, and he plays it clean. Got a great tone. Got a great feel for being able to provide emotion in his solos. Truly, I feel like he's writing a solo and thoughts just playing it. And that's important. The riffs are good. They're strong. I love all the atmospherics. I love the different turntable and DJ DJ textures. That, and I'm not I'm normally not a fan of that stuff. I love the orchestration. I love all the different keyboards and the samples and the synths. It's all rolled together into one incredible package. It's a powerful record. Lyrically, it's, I feel like this guy's pulling stuff out of his soul and putting it on display. And that's tough. As somebody who's been in bands and written lyrics and written poetry and all that stuff, it's tough to put yourself on display sometimes. The fact that he's doing that, drawing so much from within himself and putting it out there, it's amazing. It really, really is. I can see why so many people love this record. And I'll be honest, it's not one that I would have picked up if... Yao Mei would not have recommended this. And dude, thank you so much. This is not something that I would have picked up on my own. And honestly, I would have never known. Ignorance truly would have been bliss because I would have never known what I was missing. I would have never known just how good this record is and how incredible it is. I mean, wow. I don't know what to say. Yeah, man. My friend. Thank you. What you guys can't see is not only did he translate 
all of these lyrics for me. He, for songs that he felt he needed to provide explanations of certain lyrics or certain uh, kanji, and he provided these incredible interpretations and translations in the notes. So I had all the lyrics in front of me, and I had, in, in chronological order, so all I had to do was just hit right or left and go back and forth. And all of these translations and interpretations and personal notes, and that's incredible, man. I'm absolutely humbled. I'm honored and I'm humbled that you took the time to do this. Truly, I cannot express my gratitude to you for doing that for me. Clearly, this is a record that is very personal to you and very powerful. And it has a lot of personal meaning. And I cannot express that gratitude enough that you wanted to share that with me. And to share that with all the viewers and subscribers here and potential people that might see this on the channel. That's incredible, man. Thank you so much for doing that. That's a lot of effort and it certainly deserves to be recognized. And I truly, truly from the bottom of my heart appreciate that. Thank you for showing me something that I would not have found otherwise. Thank you for sharing something that clearly means as much to you as it does for me just to sharing it with me and sharing it with everybody else here. Truly, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I, I can't thank you enough. I really can't. <sighs> wow. I am really humble here. Thank all of you for so much support. Thank you for supporting this idea. I wanted to do something different. I wanted, I could sit, I could do videos every day for the month, but I wanted to break from what we're, what we've been doing and just give you guys a chance to experience full records and be able to experience records the way I like experiencing a record all at once, just enjoying it. And the amount of support was far more than I expected. So truly, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for enjoying it with me and being here. Thank you to my law enforcement, military veterans, and first responders, which you do every single day. I love you, and I appreciate you. Saying you guys have been awesome and I have, and I have been bald, man, truly is not enough to thank all of you. Truly appreciate it. But you have been awesome, and I have been bald, man. And this is a hell of a review, or hell of a, a video, hell of a review, hell of a reaction, however you want to call it. Definitely one of the most enjoyable albums I've done in a long time. Of stuff that I like, that I would pick up myself, and stuff that I've been shown for the first time. It's really impressive stuff. Thank you so much. Be excellent to each other. And keep that back.